The mean of five consecutive integers is 15. What are the numbers? What are these five consecutive integers? All right, now this is obviously a pretty short problem, but the solution uh, does require a bit of work. And if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, I will solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. And if you don't know what the mean stands for or, or what the mean is or consecutive integer is, well, these are very important concepts in mathematics. And uh, before we even get into that, we need to consider that we are dealing with a uh, math word problem and we want to use the rule of three. In other words, read the problem three times, make sure you understand it. Now this uh, problem is pretty uh, short, and the main thing here is that we need to understand these terms. So what is the mean? Let's start with that word. So what is the mean? Well, this is just a fancy word for average, okay? So the mean is the same thing as the average. Now, how do you calculate the average? Well, if you have uh, these numbers, let's say two, three, and four, to calculate the average, you simply add up all the numbers you have and divide by those amount of numbers, right? So here we have two plus three plus four, and because we have three numbers, one, two, three, we're gonna divide by three. So this is gonna be what? Well, this would be two and three is five. Five plus uh, four is nine, right? So we have nine over three, and nine divided by three is three. And you can kind of see that the average is three. Well, it looks like it makes sense because it's right in between two and four but the mean is nothing more than the average. Now that is not to be confused with another, other terms in basic, uh, basic statistics, uh, uh, primarily uh, the median. Uh, so many people confuse the median and the mean. Uh, remember, just the mean is the average. The median is a whole different deal and you definitely need to understand this. And I'll give you some suggestions on how you can learn all of this, but uh, again, with this particular problem, we just need to understand the average. Okay, so now the next component of this problem is what is a consecutive integer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Now, first of all, we need to um, remember what an integer is. Now, the integer or integers is a, um, uh, they are a subset of the real number system. So you can see I have some examples here, but when you study numbers, we study the real number systems first, and then when you get into more advanced algebra, you get into other number systems like the complex number system. So here you start with zero, we we'll actually start with these numbers here, one, two, three, uh, before zero even was even around. Now imagine here is your lovely hand, all right? This is a terrible hand, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, the word digit, right? Like, hey, what's the digit? Uh, how many digits? There's four digits, da, da, da. Well, these are your digits of your hand. So, you know, way back in the good old days, people would identify, hey, I see two bears. I see, or sorry, we, I see one bear or two deer or three uh, panthers, whatever the case is, these are called the counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. Then we throw zero into this and these are the whole numbers. Uh, so if we have the whole numbers and the positive and negative whole numbers, we have the set of integers and there's other sets of numbers that you need to know on the real number system like rational numbers, irrational numbers, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, anyways, I don't want to digress too much. I just can't help myself when we're talking about math. I want to make sure you fully understand these concepts. All right, so these are integers, and this problem is talking about consecutive integers. So what does the word consecutive mean? Well, it means uh, they are in a, uh, they're coming um, uh, numbers that are one right after the other. So for example, one, two, and three are consecutive integers because we have one, and then we have the next integer in line, and then the next integer like that. So what would not be consecutive integers would be like negative three, zero, and five, okay? These are not one right after the other. These right here are consecutive and they are integers. So these are the type of numbers that we are looking for. All right, so now hopefully 
you're saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get it. I now know what a consecutive integer is. I know what the mean uh, means. It's the average. So now what we need to do is use some algebra to figure this out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the variable x represent our first integer. Okay. Now, if I have x and now I want the next integer and then a the next integer and I have five integers, what would be my next integer after x? Well, I'm just going to add one. Okay, so if we go back to our integers here, like one, two, three, these are separated by one, zero to one, one to two, two to three, etc. So if x is our first integer, x plus one would be our second integer. Now, if I have x plus one and now I add another one to the x plus one, I have my third integer. Now, this is x plus one plus one or x plus two. Now, if I have x plus 2 plus 1, I have x plus 3. That's my fourth integer. And if I add 1 to this, I got x plus 4. That's my fifth integer. Okay, so make sure you understand what's going on here. And if you do, you're like, all right, I think I know where this guy is going. What we're going to want to do is get back to the prom because what does the prom state? Well, it says that the mean or the average of these five consecutive integers, and now we have models for these, right? Algebraic or variable expressions that represent these five consecutive integers. Uh, and the answer says the mean of these five consecutive ent integers, excuse me, is 15, all right, is 15. So we can build an equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up all our lovely integers here, right? So we have five of them, one, two, three, four, five, and the average, so we have one, two, three, four, five, we have to remember we are talking about the mean or the average is equal to 15. All right, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So here is our five consecutive integers. So if we wanted to find the average, we would do what? We would add these up and then we would divide by what? One, two, three, four, five, right? And we know the answer is 15. So we're gonna build ourselves a lovely equation that looks like this. Okay, so x plus x plus one plus x plus two plus x plus three plus x plus four. There's five, we're gonna divide by five. We know that the mean or the average is 15. So now it really comes down to your ability to solve this lovely equation. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Well, first things first, first we need to simplify this numerator. It looks pretty scary here, but we have a lot of like terms. We have a bunch of X's and a bunch of numbers. So how many X's do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. So that is, you know, five X's, right? So X plus X plus X plus X is five X. And then of course we have one, two, three, and four. That's gonna add up to 10, that's three. And then we got a three and three, that's six. And then six and four is 10. So we have five uh, X plus 10 over five is equal to 15. Okay, so that is the equation right now. It's much simpler than what it looks like, right? So, you know, never be, overly intimidated by something. And now what can we do here? Well, this is a great opportunity for us to use our factoring skills and factor out the GCF or the greatest common factor, right? So I can take a five out here. So I can write this as five times X plus two. Now, uh, by doing so, I'll be able to cross cancel these fives right here. So it's just gonna make my life so much easier. Now, if you didn't go that route, you could have said, all right, well, this is 15 or 15 over one. You could have thought of this as a proportion and maybe cross multiplied. That's not a bad route as well, but always look for opportunities to factor when you can. All right, so we're gonna factor out the GCF, which we did, which is five. Now we're gonna cross cancel uh, this five with this five. Remember, these are factors. This is being separated by multiplication. And now look right here, I have this lovely equation, x plus two is equal to 15. So uh, to solve for x, all I have to do is subtract two from both sides 
sides of the equation, I got x is equal to 13. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have to go back to our setup, and our setup was what? Well, our setup was the following, right? Let me go back over here, and I'm going to show you another way to solve this equation. So here is our setup. We know that our first integer, x is equal to 13, is going to be obviously our first um, consecutive integer. But let me go back over here real quick and show you another approach you could have taken to solve this equation, being that I brought it up. So you could have uh, decided, well, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just think of this as two equal fractions or a proportion. So I'll be like, all right, 5 times uh, 15 is 75. 1 times 5x plus 10 is 5x plus 10. Now I can go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. I got 5x is equal to 65. Then I'll divide both sides of the equation by 5, and I get x is equal to 13. So that is perfectly fine as well. Okay. So remember, in algebra, you know, um, there's just not one way to solve, you know, a problem. Now, typically, there's going to be the best way, right, the most efficient way. And the only way you discover that is through practice, practice, practice. But the bottom line is that we know that x is equal to 13, and now we can put this all together. So what is our five consecutive integers? Well, our first integer is 13, all right? And if we're talking about consecutive integers, uh, they're going to be separated by 1, right? So x plus 1, so 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 is going to be the answer. Now, of course, we could go ahead and find the average, but we can see that the average here, or this middle number, which is also the median, is going to be 15. All right, so hopefully this was a pretty easy problem. Uh, don't ever look, don't ever let, you know, uh, a problem intimidate you, okay? Now, of course, I know, even myself, there is very advanced math problems that I would be, you know, you know, intimidated by. So, you know, it's just uh, natural, you know, to, or human to be like, it's kind of, you know, first impressions, be like, oh, this is very difficult, or I don't understand what's going on. But the way to approach a situation that it seems complicated, whether it's an equation or a problem, is just to break it down in its component parts. And in this particular problem, if you didn't understand what these terms mean, well, you got to go, you know, answer those questions first and then go back and revisit the problem. Now, if you need help with uh, word problems or algebra, first of all, I have a ton of uh, word problems on my YouTube channel. Uh, so a lot, of them, a lot of them involve algebra. Others of them um, involve trigonometry or geometry. But um, here's the thing. Before you do word problems, you got to get the skills down, right? So the algebra skills. So if you want to learn algebra, Again, check out my main courses, my pre-algebra, algebra 1, or algebra 2 courses. You'll find links to those in the description. If you are not a math student but you want to maybe kind of rebuild your math skills, well, check out my math skills rebuilder course. Here I teach you basic math, then I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. Says, uh, statistics because I think of everyone that possibly could, uh, you know, watch my videos. And a lot of people watch my videos are not uh, math students. They're just people that like to learn math. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.